how's it going? I'm Casey Martin from Wine Country Pens and this video is gonna be a new shop tour. So basically, now my shop is out in this two car garage. It was previously in my basement. I had some issues with flooding because the basement really wasn't built to be inhabited or have anything in it. So I'm just gonna take you guys through everything I've done so far, maybe touch on things that I plan to do, talk about the door my dad and I put in because that was interesting and a really fun learning experience for me. So let's get into it everyone. Hope you enjoy. Alright everyone, so this section of the shop is where I do the majority of my production. It has almost all my tools because almost all my tools are bench top tools. So over on this side I have my Nova Comet 2 lathe and then I've got my Craftsman bench top drill press and then Behind me I've got my Grizzly uh, bandsaw and then over here I have my finishing lathe and it's really nice having all this right next to each other because if I have a big order or need to finish a lot of pens right after turning them it's just it's really nice having everything close together now so I'll bring you guys over to this section in a second. Alright everyone so on this section starting off over here I've got my Ryobi 10 inch chop saw. What I did here, which I thought was kind of a clever idea, I, I, I think I might have seen it before. Or, I mean, it's not a, too original, but what I did is I sunk down the chop saw the same amount of height that the stand is that makes the plane level with the tables for when I'm cutting long boards or anything like that. It's nice to not have things falling off when I cut them. So. That was really useful and, and kind of fun and then I'll show you in a second in a different shot how now I have a little space to put my shot back under there. And then over here is my Ryobi uh, grinder and then I have a Wolverine like one way sharpening jig system for that. I, if anybody's curious about that let me know and I can um, either just e email you guys about it or I might make a video at some point. But. Um, this guy is my belt and disc sander, and then over here is a oscillating spindle sander. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that. And uh, on to the next section. Here's that little alcove I was talking about for my shop back. All right, everyone, so this section over here you may have seen before in some of my previous videos. This is my stabilizing area. So I've got two toaster ovens, I've got all of my cactus juice stabilizing resin over there, and I've got a ton of airtight containers right here to keep the dry material that I've already dried and then some of the material that needs to be stabilized or then dried or, or anything of that sort. And then um, over here is my vacuum pump and then my vacuum chamber as well. So moving on. All right, everyone, so this section over here is my assembly area. I've got all my pen kits and some storage over here. I've got a, it's actually a drawer cabinet mat that I assemble my stuff on because it, it grips pretty well to the, to the tabletop. Down here, I've got my older table saw that is a job side table saw, so obviously it can fold up and it fits perfectly under there. Got a mini fridge down there and then a whole bunch of painting storage crap that was already in here and it'll stay here until I find a better place for it. And um, that's about it for this section. I have, if, if you're wondering what this is on the ground, it's some um, extra dust collection ductwork stuff that uh, I'll talk about in a second because I finally set up a dust collection system over here. So moving on. All right, everyone, so <laughs> it's kind of a weird shot. Hopefully you can see everything to, for the most part. So behind me is my dust collector. It's a Shop Fox, Shop Fox dust collector. I forget the exact model number off the top of my head. I'll leave it down below if anyone's curious. Um, and then over here is my desk computer area. It's for the shop computer that I built. I made a previous video about it. If anyone's curious, check that out. And I've got my laser, little laser engraver for pens right over here on the desk, which is nice to have in the shop and uh, obviously some, some pretzels and <laughs> for a snack. So moving on to the casting area right over here. All right, so everyone, as you can probably tell, this is my casting area. So this is where I cast all my pen blanks and anything that I do with Illumilite. Over here is where I have all of my pressure pots and right behind it is my air compressor so I can turn it on and off there. 
This is the casting table that I had in my basement with the HDPE sheet on top. So it's really easy to clean when I need to. Got some storage underneath here of extra Alumilite and gloves, things of that nature. And then you probably can't see it, but underneath the pressure pot table, I also have some other storage for grapevine that's already stabilized, uh, cut pen blanks, anything like that. So moving on to the next section. Oh, one thing I also want to mention that's really nice about this section, and I'll show a better shot in a second, but I ha now have my air hose on a reel that rotates and swivels and everything. So like I said, I'll show you a better shot in a second, but wanted to touch on that as well. So this is the hose reel I was talking about. It's really nice because it, it, it moves on a, on a swivel and then just goes right back there. And then this is my air compressor. Um, sound insulated box I, I mean that's really all it is but what's nice about it now is now i have the switch right here so i can just reach it's within arm's reach to turn it on and off and um yeah if anyone's curious about that i made a video about it it was actually my first video so check that out if you're curious and um now i will show you guys the door all right everyone so this is the door my dad and i put in I'll show you guys uh, some before shots because it's actually pretty cool to... I have a shot of me pushing out the stucco after we cut it and everything. So this was very important to have because the garage doors in here right now, they don't lock. They don't close properly. Well, one closes okay. The other doesn't close properly because the concrete came up. And so when we finally get these replaced, it'll be great that they'll lock and be secure. But right now we got to do some you know, like boarding and everything like that to lock in. So this is great to have. It's also a lot nicer rather than lifting up a garage door every time. And um, yeah, it was it was an incredibly awesome learning experience for me because I had never put in a door before. I had no idea how, and cutting in the stucco was not something I thought would be easy, but my dad and I, did it. My, my dad's a engi civil engineer, owns his own firm, and does a ton of work. So when he said, oh, it'll be easy, I was like, okay, dad. But anyway, um, we got a diamond tipped blade for a circular saw, cut it out. I have some shots of that, so I'll, I'll show that. And I'll also show a shot, um, a shot of like the before and after of the shop. So. I'm here. Go ahead. Okay, actually, come over here. We're going to both have to carry it. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, stay there. Stay there. That way you can be yeah. seen in your film. Start lifting. Oh! <laughs> well, we're going to break it up. Alright, so this is my new table saw, and man, this thing is badass. I am in love with it. I've only made a few cuts because I literally just set it up like two days ago. But it is so sweet. You can probably see the model number down there. It's the G0771. And it's like, it's the perfect thing for me because it's, they call it like a hybrid cabinet table saw, and so it's still really heavy, but at the same time, like, it's still somewhat movable if need be. And I really lucked out on this positioning of it because I don't know if you guys can see in this shot or in the previous shots, but the ground in here, the concrete is all cracked. And so I was lucky enough to find a perfectly level section of this in the exact area that it worked out to have a lot of room that was level because I obviously could have shimmed it, like I shimmed almost all of these benches in here. But shimming a table saw is something that if you can't avoid is the best because then it won't have nearly as much vibration as something that was shimmed was. And so this thing is awesome. I may make a future video just reviewing it after I've used it for a long time. But yeah, this thing is sweet. I am very happy about this and glad I was able to save up for this guy. 
And behind it, I'll show a better shot in a second, but it's my Delta planer. That's also new, and I'm really excited to make some cutting boards and just other fun things with that, so I'll, I'll show you guys that in a second. All right, everyone, so this is my planer. I haven't even used it yet. I literally just set it up yesterday and set up the base for it. What's really sweet about this base is it's a mobile base and it has wheels. Because I don't know if you guys have really noticed, but I've tried to keep this section of the shop as open as possible. So that if I ever do need to pull a car in here to work on it or anything of that sort, I can. And so I'm really excited about this guy, like I said. And I, I think what I'll talk about next is I'll show you guys the lighting and, and what we did for this area. All right, so it, it, it's really hard to show. And right now the cords are all a mess. All this wiring for these lights and the electrical in here was done by some previous college guys who lived in this house like six or seven years ago. So my dad and I at some point are gonna run conduit for all of it and make it much, much tidier. But basically I have four shop lights up top that were previously here. And my dad and I swapped them out with some LED bulbs, which is awesome. I mean, I think each bulb, it was like $1.63 per year of energy costs with an average of three hours per day of use. And so with eight bulbs in total, it's like 13 or $14. And then I brought three of my shop lights that were in the basement in here. And what's cool, what I lucked out, the way these four lights are wired is they're wired to an out, to two separate outlets that are connected to a switch. And that's how they get power is you turn on that switch. And so all I did was I just used a receptacle that makes the outlets from two outlets to six. And then I was just able to plug the shop lights into that outlet. And then now all of my lights turn on and off with the switch. And I'm super happy about the, the color temperature, like the brightness and everything. And LEDs are the way to go in terms of energy savings. So moving on. All right, so another kind of weird shot, but hopefully you guys can kind of see, I have some duct work of my dust collection down here, a couple blast gates and stuff like that. And what I will have, and I will touch on it in some of my, in my future videos, is that I'm getting a dust collection system from Rockler for my lathe. It's called like the Dust Right Lathe Collection System or something like that. And that's what this two and a half inch connection, hopefully you guys can kind of see it with the blast gate is for. So like I said, it's not here obviously, so you'll see it in the future, but just wanted to kind of touch on that as well. So I know you guys are wondering about that. What that sign is from is from the college guys I mentioned that lived in this house six or seven years ago and they must have stole it from like a construction site or road construction or something. So rather than throwing it away, my dad and I, when we were doing the door, thought, hey, might as well hang it up. And we got rid of the base, but I think it's, it's fitting. So <laughs> let me know what you guys think. I think it's pretty funny. So one, one thing I thought that was worth mentioning was why this TV is here. So this TV, I mounted it to the wall clearly and it actually connects to that shop computer because I, I recently learned like a month or two ago, my, my housemate actually told me that you can watch, so we have charter for cable, for example, and we can watch channels online. So I use a Wi-Fi extender to get Wi-Fi to this garage and this guy, since it's on a mount, it can sw sw swivel, geez. It can turn all the way that way if I'm over there and want to watch something while I'm working or vice versa, it can swivel the, swivel the other way. Obviously, I'm not going to be watching anything while I'm on the lathe, but it is nice to have because since I'm away from everything, like if I want to watch a sports game or something while I'm working in here for a few hours, I can. So I think that's almost it. All right, everyone, well, thanks for watching this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I sure enjoyed showing it and sharing my new shop with you guys. I may, I should have mentioned it earlier, but if you guys were wondering, this garage is actually a standalone garage. So I'm really looking forward to being able to work in here and not worry about being loud any time of the day or night. And so I plan on cranking out a lot of videos in here for you guys, because like I just mentioned, I can be in here almost any time. So, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, no hard feelings there. Give uh, me a subscri subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing any of my future videos. And now I'll show you guys a cool before and after pan shot of everything. So take it easy everyone, have a great one.